Well, with the downing of this latest airliner, the Malaysian airliner, you got all kinds of things coming out. This may take two parts. We'll see. If it does, this will be part one. If it doesn't, then I completed the whole thing. Simple question. Who benefits the most from this airliner being shot down? You can't see that Russia benefits at all. How do you how would Russia benefit from killing a bunch of innocent people? I don't see it. Who does benefit? Well, those that want to make Russia look dastardly and inhumane, which would be the forces in Ukraine that are against Putin and Russia. The United States, who is in the game of regime change, who does foment ill will within a country and causes uprisings so that there can be overthrow. They like to call them revolutions or Arab Springs, whatnot. They put a tasty description on it. When all it is is the, the hidden hand in the background causing all the problem so that out of the problem, the solution is a new leader and a new government to run everything. The European Union would also look good. So, what we have to remember is what's already been said. They're convicted with their own words. This is an older article, and as you can see, Tomashenko is who said this. Eight million Ukrainian Russians must be killed with nuclear weapons. This is a, a, a female former leader who went to prison for her corrupt doings making a statement like that. And that is why I say they have to be psychopaths with a huge bloodlust. And if they're not just totally filled with evil spirit because the same human does not say or want something like this. So here's our words. And I'll read most of what I can here without getting totally saying something you don't want me to say on here. I am ready to grab a machine gun and shoot the mother effer, which is Putin, in the head. I would have found a way to kill those assholes. I hope I'll be able to get all my connections involved. And I'll use all of my means to make the entire world rise up. Get it? This woman says she's going to use all her means to make the whole world rise up so there wouldn't be even a scorched field left in Russia. On a question of what to do with the 8 million Russians left inside the Ukraine, she says they must be killed with nuclear weapons. Now, these are her words. I didn't make them up. These are fact. This is what this woman has said. She would shoot Putin in the head, kill all those assholes, make the whole world rise up against Russia so there would be nothing left, not even a scorched field. And you take the 8 million Russians into Ukraine and you kill them. That's already been said by this person. This is her, in case nobody knows. Just, you can find this. It's simple. It's just Wikipedia. And you can verify everything that's said in here is correct. So, she is, or was, a Ukrainian politician and businesswoman. 
and she led the Orange Revolution. The first woman appointed Prime Minister of the Ukraine until 2010. She is or was the leader of the All-Ukrainian Union Fatherland political party, which received the second most votes in the 2012 Ukrainian parliamentary election, winning 101 votes of 450 seats. In the presidential election, she got 12.81% of the vote, coming in second to Poroshenko. Poroshenko is a U.S. puppet leader placed in there. She finished second in the presidential election in 2010 and lost to Yanukovych, which is who the United States did not want in there. Chased him out of there, right? Yeah. After the election, a number of criminal cases were brought against her, and in 2011, on October, she was convicted of embezzlement and sentenced to seven years in prison in order to pay the state 188 million bucks. These convictions were viewed by a lot of countries, most prominently the European Union, who repeatedly called for release of her as a primary condition for signing the EU Association Agreement and USA and international organizations such as Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International as politically biased. She was released in February of 2014. Yeah, five months ago. In the concluding days of the Euro Maiden Revolution, see, she gets out. Yeah, once they got a new leader in the concluding days of the Euro Maiden Revolution, following a revision of the Ukrainian criminal code that effectively decriminalized the actions for which she was imprisoned. Make it all go away. Change the laws. You didn't do anything wrong. She was officially rehabilitated February 28th. Six days after she got out, eh? Just after the Euro Maiden Revolution, the Ukrainian Supreme Court closed the case and found that no crime was committed. Prior to her career, Tomashenko was a successful but controversial businesswoman in the natural gas industry. Yeah. Becoming, by some estimates, one of the richest people in the country, and in 2005, she placed third in the Forbes magazine's list of the world's most powerful women. This woman strives for Ukraine's integration into the European Union and strongly opposes the membership of Ukraine in the Customs Union of Belarus, Kazakhstan, and Russia. See? Remember the bailout they needed in Ukraine? They got choice of Russia or European Union. And their leader at that time chose Russia. Yeah. But they got rid of him, didn't they? The United States helped to get rid of him. And they got the puppet in there, and then the puppet accepted the European Union offer. See? This woman opposed anything that had to do with Russia. Supported European Union. See? See what I'm saying? Now we come over here to the Charlie Rose Show, and I want you to pay special attention to this thing here. You know, she lies about everything, so we're going to take what she says and we're going to flip it upside down to try and get to the truth of what she said. So let's see. What did she say? What questions would you be asking at this moment? Well, the questions I'd be asking is, number one, who could have shot it down? Who had the uh, equipment? It's obviously an anti-aircraft missile. Uh, who could have had the uh, expertise to do that? Uh, because commercial airlines are big targets, but by the time they got over that part of Ukraine, they should have been high, so it takes some, you know, some planning. Uh, and the Ukrainian government has been quick to blame it on terrorists, which is, you know, their uh, name for the Russian insurgents. And there does seem to be some growing uh, awareness that it probably had to be Russian insurgents. Now, how we determine that will require some forensics, but then if there 
is evidence pointing in that direction. The equipment had to have come from Russia. Uh, what more the Russians may or may not have done, we don't know. I, I read as I was walking in today to talk with you, the Russian stock market has dropped. There is a great deal of concern that not only was a civilian plane shot down, but what this means about the continuing conflict in eastern Ukraine and the role that Russia is playing. So what does the United States do if there is clear indication and clear evidence that it was Russian separatists and perhaps using weapons from Russia? I think that the first question is what does Europe do? I think the United States has been very clear in both its uh, criticism of Russia and Putin, its support for Poroshenko uh, and the new Ukrainian government, and there has just been a new round of sanctions that uh, President Obama himself has announced. As you know, the Europeans uh, have tried to figure out the best way forward. Uh, I was recently in Europe, a lot of questions about whether or not uh, Russia was really the aggressor, whether or not Putin was really dangerous, how could that be evaluated? From my perspective, and I, I have the benefit of not being in the government, if there is evidence linking Russia to this, that should uh, inspire the Europeans to do much more on three counts. One, toughen their own sanctions, make it very clear there has to be a price to pay. Number two, immediately accelerate efforts and announce they are doing so to find alternatives to Gazprom. You know, Russia has not diversified its economy. It is still largely dependent upon natural resources, principally gas and, and oil. And thirdly, do more in concert with us to support the Ukrainians. There has to be more help on their borders in order to prevent this porous border, allowing Russians to go back and forth, insurgents to do the same. Do more to help their military obtain better equipment, better training. The Ukrainian military under Poroshenko has been much more focused and more successful, but nobody kids themselves. If Russia really keeps weighing in on behalf of the insurgents, there's a lot more that needs to be done. And to put Putin on notice that he has gone too far and we are not going to stand idly by. There you heard it. So what did she really mean? Well, what you got was ratchet up sanctions. Well, that is uh, something that they already have in place, is sanctions. So that would be a piece of the truth. Screw in the sanctions even harder if they're having an effect on them. And then she said, find alternatives to Gazprom. Find alternatives. Yeah. Well, it's about resources, folks. Russia has signed a big deal to supply China. They're going to make a buku buck supplying the Chinese for a long time with natural gas. So that means lots of good things for the Russian economy with these deals. You've got the, you've got the trade union that Russia's formed, right? They got a nice big fat trade union of countries and they may be getting ready to squat on the dollar and quit trading in the dollar. You understand these folks will do anything they can to keep this Ponzi scheme going. So U.S. does not want Gazprom. They do not want Gazprom. See? They want to take control away from Russia. And that's what it's about, controlling everything, controlling the region. Can you see the fingerprints of the United States? She also said that the weapons uh, must have come from Russia. Well, I got something. Hey, them weapons that ISIS has got, yeah, they came from the United States of America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that we're behind them? Yeah. He admitted it. CIA trained in Jordan. See through the smoke. And see what's on the other side. Don't let them mess with your heads. <laughs>